It was just another day on the internet. I was scrolling on YouTube and a thumbnail of a chocolate dessert caught my eye. The title of the video said, Got milk and chocolate? Delicious dessert. No oven, no flour, no gelatin. I just had to click on that video. This video was on a German cooking channel, a name that I cannot pronounce but it translates to quick recipes and it's run by someone called Alexander. And this chocolate dessert video had over 10 million views. Today it has 21 million views. I knew then and there that I just had to make it and try it. Horns up and welcome to a brand new episode of Headbangers Kitchen. I think by now you have figured out just what we are cooking today. I mean when I saw that dessert I just knew I had to make it and it's going to be chocolatey and probably a bit gelatinous as well and I'm super excited to try this recipe and see if it lives up to all the hype. But anyway that's enough jibber jabber, let's get cooking. The title of this video says, do you have milk and chocolate? So you think that's all you need. But what it doesn't say is that you also need sugar, cocoa powder, a pinch of salt, some agar agar which is a vegetarian alternative for gelatin and some water. Oh wait, you also need an extra 100 ml of milk? Did I mention you also need some cocoa powder and coconut flakes for garnish at the end too? Yeah. So it's a little more than just chocolate and milk. The first thing I do is take the extra 100 ml of the milk and add my cocoa powder to that. And of course, give it all a good mix. Now make sure you get it as nice and smooth as possible. In hindsight, I should have sifted my cocoa powder to make the job easier. And I also noticed that my mixture wasn't as thick as Alexander's in his video. But I'll go with this. Next, I mix the agar agar with the 20 ml of water as per Alexander's recipe but instead of getting a wet mixture like his, mine was dry like a paste. In a saucepan, I add the main milk for the recipe, the sugar and a pinch of salt. I also break up my chocolate into smaller pieces and what this does is it helps the chocolate to melt quicker. The larger the pieces are, the longer it will take to melt when I add it to the milk later. I also take my milk cartons and I prep them. Using a scissor or a knife, you just want to cut out the top. We're going to be using these to set our dessert in. So when it's set, you tear the carton and you get a carton shaped dessert. I guess that's part of the novelty of this. I turn on my stove and get the milk, sugar and salt mixture on and just heat that on a low heat till the sugar has dissolved. Once that's done, I add in the milk and the cocoa powder mixture and I mix it well. And this is where I could see a few lumps of the cocoa powder, a painful reminder that I should have sifted the cocoa powder. But no worries, it will hopefully break up soon enough. Then in goes my chocolate and you cook this slowly till all that chocolate melts. The smaller the pieces of chocolate, the quicker it melts. Now this actually smells quite nice and I taste it and it's like a killer hot chocolate. Frankly you could just pour this into a glass and drink away. But anyway now that the chocolate has melted I add in the agar agar mixture and I give it a good mix but I realized that the mixture was too dry and also my pot is too small. So I actually just transfer the whole mixture into a bigger pot. And I also decide to strain the mixture hoping I'll get a smoother mixture and I'll also dissolve the agar agar much easier. And of course don't worry I'll put all this info on the blog post because this recipe does still need some tweaking. Now I get that mixture back on the stove and cook it till hopefully everything is dissolved including the agar agar. And then we're going to pour it into our milk cartons and put it in the fridge to set for 2-3 to three hours. I also had some extra mixture which I put into a plastic container to make a round version of this. Now the mix in the plastic container set much quicker so I popped it out once it was set and it looks just like pudding. So I sliced it and it looks pretty decent you know glossy and jelly like. What do you guys think? Anyway let me show you a close up of it. Look at the texture, the shine and the gloss on it. Quite cool but how does it taste? Only time will tell. 
Now it's time to unveil the superhero of this story, not the sidekick. So let's get that milk carton out and using a combination of kitchen scissors and brute force, I free the pudding from the shackles of that milk carton. I then place it on a little plate and it's looking pretty sweet. I will finish it off with a dusting of cocoa powder, a cruel reminder of how I did not sift my cocoa powder before using it and then the coconut flakes which by the way I thought was sea salt for the longest time till I actually read the recipe. And I will tell you one thing, that is an eye catching dessert if I ever saw one. I have no idea how it tastes but it definitely looks very appetizing and a little bit fancy as well. I cannot let you go of course without cutting into that bad boy and just take a few seconds to enjoy the b-roll. And now the close up. Anyway, jibber jabber or not, time to taste. Alright folks, it's time to taste our chocolate dessert and look who is reluctantly joining me today. It's my beautiful wife, Dipti. And being the resident dessert expert in this house, she is very skeptical of this, of this dessert. So, are you ready to taste? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's dig in then. No jibber jabber, let's get straight to it. It's like pudding. Okay, I'll be honest. When I watched the making of this, I thought it was going to be an absolute disaster. Like, it looked like a disaster. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a disaster at every step. But, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, yeah. Like, according to me, desserts are supposed to be hard graft, right? Like, it takes work, it takes careful measurement. You can't just throw things together in five minutes and expect to have a great dessert. But he's given measurements. Yeah, but, okay. It's not a great dessert, but it is very much like the pudding cups of our child. Exactly, yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like those pudding it's cups. It's a chocolate pudding cup. And it's just fancified. Yeah, and as you saw, I did have a few problems while making this dessert, like the agar agar to water measurement seemed a bit off and it was lumpy and I had to strain it and I had to do a whole bunch of things but I'll write out all those things on the blog post so that you don't run into the same hurdles that I did but I guess I, I don't know why a dessert like this has 20 million views it doesn't taste like 20 million views but it uh, but it's, it's, it's not bad it's really not bad it's growing on me yeah it has a very childhood comforting quality to it those pudding cups yeah Okay, so anyway, I think we can definitely give this the horns up. Maybe one horn instead of two. Half a horn. Okay, Dipti gives it a half a horn. I'll give it a whole horn. And I think that's enough jibber jabber from the two of us. We will see you on the next episode of Headbangers Kitchen. Until then, cheers and keep cooking. The translation of the channel name is Quick Recipes. And my German is pretty bad. I think it's Schnelle Rezepte. Uh, Dipti, could you help with the pronunciation? Can you please come here and pronounce it? I will not! We will this cut terrible. to it! Sai, say it with me! Schneller Receptor! Schneller Receptor! Schneller Receptor! Schneller Receptor! Receptor! Schneller Receptor! Schneller Receptor! Can you, you can please? do it! I can't. You can do it! I, I can't! It's you. Schneller Receptor! This is not going to look good! Schneller Receptor! It will look terrible in the end! Schneller receptor. Can you just stick behind my no, shoulder and no, say it? No, no, please. No. Just pop out no. from. Just do the intro again. <laughs>